hey, do you want to go from this to this? Let's do it. Okay, before anything, subscribe to my channel because I have cats to feed and unfortunately, my cats only feed on YouTube subscribers. So please, subscribe now and also visit my website. Maybe you can book a private consultation with me and you can ask me anything about music production, Ableton, writing songs, gear, anything that you want. Book a session, juliangrim.com. Back to the video. So, how's everyone doing? One of my favorite things to do with my old songs is transforming them into something else. And I can do that in many ways. Sometimes I do kind of a poppy remix, sometimes I do an EDM remix just to kind of figure things out in my head, but sometimes I also like to go to the Metallica route and just do an orchestral version of my song. Unfortunately, I'm not Metallica and I can't afford an orchestra, but luckily for me, the guys from Spitfire Audio gave me one of their plugins to test out today. But I'm gonna test it out in a way that probably no one else is gonna test it out because this plugin it has an Abbey Road vibe it's called the Abbey Road 2 and you know when I'm talking about an Abbey Road vibe I'm talking about songs like Eleanor Rigby the Beatles classic rock you know and what I'm gonna do here today is something in between grunge and punk rock this plugin is hundred percent not made for me or made for what I'm doing here but you know how I like to do weird stuff with plugins right so that's what I'm gonna do today I'm gonna try to get my old song predator and make it into an orchestral rock version. Of course I'm gonna show you the plugin as well, but if you want to see a long demo of it, I would recommend you going to the Spitfire Audio channel, because you know me, I'm Julian Grimm. In the Spitfire Audio channel, demos are very long and orgasmic and they have feelings and everything, but the Julian Grimm channel is not orgasmic. The Julian Grimm channel is like a quick one in the shower when you just face the wall, close your eyes, and do it as fast as you can, just hoping that nobody notices what you're doing. That's the Julian Grimm channel. But I digress. So this is the old version of my song and you guys can listen to it right now on Spotify. It's called Predator and it goes like this. Lost in the forest, my mind is getting weak. Running through the mud, my future's looking black. Anyways, and this on my screen right now is the new version, the orchestral version. So let me show you guys what I did. The first thing that I did was choose the main elements of the song because I don't want to keep everything from the song and the orchestra because that's going to be too much and it's going to muddy things out. So I chose the main guitar, the bass and the drums and I'm replacing some of the other guitars with the orchestral stuff and I'm writing orchestral stuff on top of the guitars as well. Let me show you what I did. So this is just what I kept from the original song right here. You get the vibe, right? So the basic stuff, drums, bass and guitars. And then I added a bunch of orchestral stuff down here. So I'm gonna show you what I did, what was my process of thought. And I'm gonna open the plugin and show you a little bit of the plugin as well. So this is the plugin right here, Spitfire Audio Abbey Road 2. They also have a pro version, but I have the basic version because I'm a basic man. <laughs> At least in their eyes, I think, maybe, I don't know. It's a very simple plugin again, like the other one I showed you guys from Spitfire Audio. It has a really clean interface, which I love. It doesn't give me a lot of room to make things worse. You see, it has a bunch of different presets here for violin, violin 2, viola, cello, and double bass and it also has everyone together up here and it mixes kind of in a cool way but yeah it's basically a string quartet so it's not an orchestra again as i told you before i do things with plugins that i shouldn't do this is a string quartet and i'm doing an orchestral version so i'm gonna try and make this quartet a bit more into an orchestra but we're just having fun anyways the plugin is very simple it has again very basic controls but they're very powerful so they have a bunch of different ways to play the strings down here which is really nice they have spiccato staccato marcato 
the pizzicato. I really only know what a pizzicato is, but I heard the different things and I chose the ones that I like the best, you know? And the spiccato and the staccato, they're quite aggressive and short and they were quite nice to do the riff. I would always recommend that when you're doing an orchestral version, choose a song that has a nice riff, an aggressive riff, because that always goes well with an orchestra. So yeah, if you have a song with a riff, it will probably make a good orchestral version. But anyways, first of all, I had only the spiccato right here. You see, I'm just doing the riff and all that I did was play the riff in one octave and then I just copied it to other octaves so it sounds a little bit bigger, like more people are playing the same riff. And I was really happy with it, but I was missing a little bit of chaos in there. So I mixed in the staccato that has a little bit more sustain and it's a little bit more loose. When I had a spiccato, I had a nice attack. And when I had a staccato, I had a nice release. So there comes one of the advantages of not actually recording a real orchestra is that you can do whatever you want and you can mix the spiccato and the staccato. Of course, you can ask the people from the orchestra to do that. But right here in the computer it was super easy. And not only that, because I added two things, one on the top of another, I made the quartet feel a little bit bigger, I think. So I have the quartets two times, the attack from the spiccato, the release from the staccato, everything gelled together and I was happy. And this is how it sounded together. And that's also reinforced by the guitar riff up here. But let's continue with the orchestra first. The next was the pizzicato. And as I told you, pizzicato is the only thing that I know how to describe, is when the players pluck the strings. But if you're thinking of sound-wise, when you're translating a punk rock song into an orchestral song, the pizzicato is the best substitute for the palm mute. Pizzicato is the palm mute of the classical world. So I have the pizzicato doing what the palm muted guitar did before, and I don't have the palm muted guitar anymore, because both of them would be too much. So this is how that sounds. I have them again in a couple of octaves and if I open the plugin right here, I'm in the ensemble and when you're in the ensemble preset, they have all of the players playing together and if I click here on this, you can see by this graph which notes are played by which player. So which notes are played by the cello or the violin or the viola. It's pretty cool because that way you can have all the players in your hands at once and you can also have each player at a time if you choose a different preset right here, which is really nice for a person like me that doesn't really know how to divide things and wants everything at the same time. The ensemble mode is quite cool. And the pizzicato, yeah, replacing the palm muting and it sounded super cool. Now in the verse, if I play everything together, I have the pizzicato and the spiccato and the staccato. The spiccato and the staccato are doing kind of a Jaws bass, you know, just a mm, mm, mm. It doesn't go to the other note, but it's kind of the same vibe as Jaws, I think. Predator, Jaws, you know, it makes kind of sense, doesn't it? And now with the pizzicato together. You see, with the secret with the orchestral plugins, I think it's always not being afraid of opening multiple instances of it and adding things because orchestras are quite big, loads of players, loads of things happening. So don't be afraid to open a bunch of instances. You might be doing something that's not very conventional or very correct, but who cares? If it sounds good in your ears, it sounds good and it's all Good. So because I'm not singing in this orchestral version for now, I don't know, I might change it later. What do you think? Do you want me to sing on this? Oh, that would be a lot of work. But anyways, because I'm not singing, I put some melody in there to other strings. So here in this section, you can really hear the melody. And for the melody, I chose the legato ways of playing. And I also can explain a legato. Look at that. I thought I would only be able to explain the pizzicato, but I know what a legato is. I'm proud of myself. A legato is literally when a player connects the notes. He doesn't stop from one note to the other. He slides from one note to the other and everything sounds connected. That's kind of my explanation of a legato. It's not as good as the pizzicato one, but it's good enough. So it kind of worked like a voice, you know, because when you're singing a lot of times, you slide from one note to the other and don't really stop. So I thought it would be nice and emotional to have one note slide into the other, add some drama to the verse, right, baby? Anyways, this is how that sounds. I 
I really liked how both of those lines sounded together. I also have another legato viola here, but it just does some little details in the background, you know, long notes, just to add a little bit to the song. The sound of this plugin is really cool. The cool thing about it, really, is if you come in here, it has so many options. It has all of the ways of playing, which is super nice, but it also has Mix 1 and Vintage 1. Mix 1 is the samples recorded through a modern mic and a modern chain in general, so it has a modern sound. And the Vintage 1 is recorded through old mics and an old chain, and it has a vintage -y sound. That's really what it is. In the Pro version, they have a bunch of other mixes, I think, but this is what I got here, and these two are quite cool. Most of my song is in the Mix 1, the modern preset, because when you're doing a heavy rock song, you really need the orchestra to be bright and present and upfront, and I only have this viola in the vintage section because it's really a background thing and I thought it added a different taste to the song. Again, this plugin has a bunch of other options, the Pro has even more options, I wish I had the Pro. It has this width thing, so you can make things wider or more mono, you can also pan them down here, and it has a bunch of effects that change depending on what preset you're on. You can always add reverb, and the reverb of these plugins are really nice, it goes really well with the strings. You can compress it more, which I did a little bit, because for a rock song I really needed the strings to be present, so I compressed them a little bit, so they weren't as dynamic as they would be in just a quartet environment, you know, they needed to shine through the guitars and the drums, so a little bit of compression was nice. And the speed is just for the legato presets, because you can choose how fast, I think, the player slides from one note to the other, and because it's a rock song, I put it up a little bit as well, just because if it was too slow, it was gonna be too delayed in the track. And if you check as well my legato playing here, I did not quantize it, because a lot of times when you quantize these string melodies, you're actually losing the feeling of the performance a little bit, and a lot of times the performance is more on time than the grid is, because the way that the notes change and, and the attack of the strings go, sometimes you need to press the key a little bit ahead of time to get the effect that you want, to get the change of note or chord that you want. So I did not quantize most of the things here. I quantized the pizzicatos, because the pizzicatos are plucked, so they are quite precise, but everything else, you see, it's not precisely on grid and it sounds good and it sounds natural. Imagine if a bunch of people were playing strings together, they would not be exactly at the same time. There would be a little bit of deviation there, one from the other, and that's good. That's what an orchestra should sound like, or a string quartet should sound like. But yeah, and that's all that I added really. You see, it was one, two, three, four, five, six instances of the same plugin. And that was enough to get this quartet that they had in there and kind of make it into an orchestra but it also doesn't sound like a cheesy full orchestra you know it has a cool vibe to it it's a little bit more grungy and, and intimate but still strong i really like the result so i'm gonna play you guys just the orchestral part i'm gonna solo it right here so you can hear it That on its own could be a version of itself. It sounds so nice. The dynamics of the, the strings and just the space in general of this plugin is so cool because it's sappy fucking rogue, you know? It sounds fucking nice. And I'm really happy that I have access to this on my fingertips now to put on all my crappy songs. But you know what you're here for. You are here for the full version, the full heavy rock version. So let's add the drums and the bass and the guitars all back in there and let's listen to it.
that is it and again i didn't mix this song yet i'm still just having fun with it but i wanted to show you what this process is all about again i could mix it more i could also come in here what i really like to do with orchestral versions is come in here in ableton turn on the scale view right here and then we can start trying to drag notes up and down and create new chords in there as well because I'm not a very good keyboard player. It's a really nice way to get chords without having to use all your fingers so you can play a melody and you can create chords by just turning on the scale here and dragging things up and, and trying things out really. But for now I think this is good because that can bring even more massiveness to the track but I don't know if this track needs to be even more massive now because more strings and more chords maybe would pollute it and would pollute the riff a little bit so it's a decision I have to make in the future. But always remember, when you're doing your orchestral versions, don't be afraid to use multiple instances of the same plugin. Group them all like I did right here and that will make your life easier in the future because you're going to have control of the full orchestra in one fader here and you're also going to be able to maybe stick a compressor and EQ in there to glue things together a little bit. There's really no right or wrong when you're doing music and I know it can be very intimidating to try things with strings and orchestral elements and all that stuff, but don't be afraid. It's fun. Music is about having fun and we can all have fun together. I hope you had fun watching this video and if you did, please press all the buttons out there that help me in this world and I see you all next time. Bye. <laughs>